Hey everyone, Chris Lewis from the Digital Newsroom at Fox 47 News. We are here for our Michigan History Throwback. We're at the capital of Michigan and we're going to be exploring the capital and everything about it, things that you may know, things that you might not know, with Valerie Marvin, who is the capital historian and curator. Today we're gonna to talk about one of only a few portraits that hangs in the Capitol building that is of a woman. This portrait behind me features Eva McCall Hamilton, who was the first woman elected to the Michigan legislature in 1920. Eva was born and raised in Michigan. She was living in Grand Rapids at the time of her election, but she was not a novice to politics. She had actually started advocating many years earlier in Grand Rapids for, among other things, the creation of farmer's markets. Policy in Grand Rapids at the time did not allow farmers to sell directly to consumers. And she worked with a group of women to try to change this prohibition. In fact, it is said that when she would go lobbying for this effort, she would carry with her a basket of fresh vegetables, including green onions. And she became known as the Green Onion Lady. She also put her lobbying talents to work for the suffrage movement. In fact, in 1912, Governor Chase Osborne told her in a letter that he believed no one had done more for the cause than she had. And thus it was appropriate in 1920 when she was elected and became the very first woman to sit in the Michigan legislature. Now at the time, the term of a senator was only two years long. So she was elected in 1920, took her seat in 1921. Now, sessions were much shorter in those days. And it is said that when she arrived here that January, she was very well received. In fact, the first day she walked onto the floor, her desk was literally covered in flowers from people who wished to congratulate her. And her um, swearing in and her first days were covered not only across the state, but actually across the nation, as she was one of not too many women who were now stepping into government for the first time. She authored about a dozen bills during her, her term. Um, about half of them were passed. And as one might expect, uh, she was very interested in legislation specifically that impacted women and impacted children. She was uh, keen on promoting better conditions for teachers. In fact, she supported legislation to create a teacher pension system. And she also supported uh, what was called a mother's pension which was a stipend that um, mothers could receive to keep their children in the home when they did not have uh, a male provider living with them. This was considered to be um, very progressive at the time. It's not to say though that every day was easy. Eva knew she was the only woman in the legislature and she knew that all eyes were upon her, but she never lost her cool or dropped her composure. And there were challenges sometimes petty little things. It said one day that when she went to pick up her briefcase, she struggled a bit with it. Turns out later she divulged someone had actually put bricks in it as a joke, just to see how she would respond. Now ultimately, Eva served one and only term. She ran for re-election in 1920, but was not successful in retaining her seat. In 1946, she was invited back to the Capitol to celebrate the 25th anniversary of uh, taking a seat on the floor. And she was hosted actually by Elizabeth Beelan, who was the third woman elected to the legislature. Incidentally, Elizabeth was a Democrat, Eva was a Republican, but they were both women. Elizabeth welcomed her back and they unveiled that day a different portrait of Senator Hamilton that was on display in the Capitol for many years, but ultimately was removed. In the 1990s, this portrait of Eva McCall Hamilton was created and was dedicated in 1995 as a, uh, celebrating her legacy here in the Senate chamber. And it is interesting to think about how times have changed. When Eva came back in 1946, she was very excited to be back in the Capitol again. But the one thing that she found disheartening that day was the fact that there was still no other woman who had followed in her footsteps in the Senate. In fact, when she passed away in 1948, that was still true. It would take actually until 1952, 32 years after her election, before a second woman, African-American Representative Cora Brown of uh, Detroit, was elected to serve here in the Senate again.